First things first, Circa. How are you? <laughs> I'm good, thank you. Did, did I pronounce it right? Circa, yeah. Yeah, okay, you did. Cool. <laughs> Um, so before we get into the uh, music and uh, the album that you're working on, I'd, I'd like to jump back a little bit. I read that you started a band at age 10. Yeah. What got you into music that early? Um, I think I started, well, so my granddad was getting rid of a keyboard. He, he's a really good sort of like jazz keyboard player. He was getting rid of one of his keyboards and he gave it to me when I was like seven, I think. So. I used to like write jingles and stuff. They didn't have songs, but they didn't have words, just like uh, little jingles on the keyboard. Um, then I started learning guitar when I was nine or 10, I think, with loads of my friends in school. So we were all in the same guitar class. So we decided that we would make a band. <laughs> what was so appealing to making music? My favorite thing is I just like making something I, I like making something new, like I, make, I like spending a couple hours and then something exists that didn't exist a couple hours earlier. Like that's a really satisfying and rewarding feeling, I think. Right. So, so is that, like you say, you kind of started writing your own stuff immediately? Yeah, like once I could play like three chords, I don't know, I just, well, I'll, I'll, I think that's why I'm, my guitar playing <laughs> sort of has been the same since I was about like a teenager because I would never spend that much time learning other people's songs or like I for me any time I would pick up a guitar and you know have to learn a song that we would do for class I would just get an idea and then sidetrack and then I'd spend the whole day writing a song instead okay. so it's just more I don't know it's like a more of a challenge or sure. like uh, a puzzle almost like you're saying yeah it's like okay. a puzzle that you have to kind of like unsolve and sometimes it takes days or weeks or like months to unsolve it with certain songs, but it's like, it feels like it's always just around the corner, so. And you started very early. Mm -hmm. When did you feel like your songwriting took off, in a sense? When did you kind of find your way, of, or you were happy with what you were doing? Pro honestly, not for a long time. Like, I, for, for ages I was like, I think I could be good at this. Actually, I think I, I thought I, I, I was a good songwriter, but it took me a while to figure out how to translate that to like actually recorded versions of my music. Okay. Um, like I think there's a lot of songs that I made earlier on, like I recorded them in my bedroom on like GarageBand, and I think they sound terrible. <laughs> Uh, some of them were on the internet for a while and then I took them all down and then sometimes people email me and are like where is that song from 2010 or something um, I don't know I think there's a song that I put out in, like a couple years ago called Petrol Station and that was the first time that I really felt like my idea for for the song and how it should sound like kind of matched the the song itself I don't know that was the first time I really felt happy about like and confident in something that I had made in terms of like the recorded version of how it sounded. Right. Was that a turning point, uh, Petrol Station, then as well? Because obviously, I think you were 18 when you moved to. Rome. Yeah, I was. Yeah. So, so that kind of pursuit of music had always been there. Kind of, but yeah, but I was like sh sort of shy and embarrassed about it <laughs> for a wow. while. I don't know. So when I, I moved to to New York to go to college, um, and I didn't do music in college, I did okay. creative writing. Um, but so I, I always played the drums when I was growing up, and I think I was I didn't think I was a good singer. I didn't really like singing. I was like I was shy about that as well. So I think um, I don't know. I just I felt like it was kind of a little far fetched to say like I want to be a musician or I like as a career so I sort of tried loads of different things like I for a second I was like maybe I'll be a journalist and then I took one journalism class in college I was like oh god <laughs> this is not for me um, so I kind of had to like rule out a couple other things and then I realized pretty quick that like I liked r do making music more than anything else and so it sort of just became a bigger part of my life over sure. wh like while I was in college I kind of just ruled everything else out okay. it was the last thing left on the table <laughs> 
But that's interesting then, because when you when petrol station comes out, then, then I, I'm sure even before that. But did you come out of your shell and, and accept kind of that that side of you where where you are singing and yeah. where you are performing? Yeah, I think it was like, it was like pretty shortly after I moved to New York. Mm. So what happened was I, I moved to New York and I couldn't bring my drum kit. Obviously, I was living in a dorm. Did there was no room in my dorm for a drum kit? So that was when I started to sing, I guess. Like sure. I had written loads of songs. Um, because I wasn't playing my drums as much, I think I wanted like some other musical outlet. Um, so I started like recording more demos that I would that I was singing on. One of my friends in college, he turned his dorm room into like a sort of makeshift studio. Okay. So we used to record in his in his room. And I think because I didn't know anyone there, I didn't. I felt like I just I didn't feel as embarrassed about it. And I think sometimes in New York, like everyone was so much more vocal about their ambitions. Um, and not ashamed to say like, oh, I'm, I want to do this. So it kind of just gave me a little bit more confidence to, to, yeah, to be, to be like that as well, I guess. Sure. And then petrol station comes out and things started uh, rolling a bit, and now you're on uh, first prize wave. Yes. Bravery, your new record. Yeah. So <laughs> before we get into the album. Uh, what, what is kind of the, the mindset when you're undertaking kind of this body of work when you, where you're making an album? Oh, that's a hard question. I don't know. I think, God, it's so hard to look back at it mm. and remember it from like this side of it because I think you forget how hard it is sometimes. Sure. You like forget the days where you just don't make any progress. Um, I don't know. I think I... I think I just wanted to write like a bigger, a bigger like story kind of, or like a make something that felt like a bit more like a 360 yeah. world. Like the, a lot of the songs on the album, to me, are like part one and part two of the same story. Or like there's threads between some of the songs and the people who they're written about and that kind of thing. So, um, but it's just exciting for me to present like a, a more complete vision of like you know, a full album rather than singles. Right, and in that sense then, uh, as you talk about it, is it more or less a, a snapshot of a certain period of your life then? Yeah, I think I, I wrote a lot of it kind of in the last year of living in New York and sort of the first six months of being back in Dublin. Okay. So I think I knew, I think I just knew that life was going to change quite significantly. So a lot of the songs was, were kind of like, I wrote because I wanted to document a certain time in my la life that I knew was coming to an end. Um, and it was a weird time <laughs> in my life. It felt very kind of chaotic and like there was a lot of upheaval and stuff. So that sort of stuff I kind of always tend to, or I like to write about that kind of stuff as well. well was it uh, more on a personal level, but also, or also on, a, on the level of kind of figuring out what, what you wanted to do with this music at that point? I mean, very much on a personal level, because okay. I didn't really, I kind of moved back to Dublin and then I didn't really know what to do. <laughs> like, I didn't know if I wanted to stay in Dublin, didn't know if I wanted to go back to New York. Like, I hadn't lived in Dublin since I was 18 and I was 26 when I came home, so uh, I was just really confused. <laughs> and um, I think I actually, get, I had a lot more clarity about what kind of music I wanted to make. Um, so that that side of it didn't feel confusing to me. Just like my own <laughs> my own life. Where you fit in? Yeah, was was a bit all over the place. Well, let's let's pick a specific song then uh, okay. to talk about. And there's well, I'll let you pick one. Which which one for you is kind of do you feel comes closest to what you had in mind for it? Uh, maybe. Maybe First Prize Bravery, I think. That's probably the song that changed the least from the demo to the final version. Um, like, I made a demo of that in my, in my bedroom. Uh, and, like, the kind of guitar riff on it and, like, the bass... Like, all of that stuff was in the original demo. There's some songs that the, the recorded version sound totally different to the demos. Um, but I think... I wanted the whole album to be, like, quite guitar-driven and... I wanted to be able to like sit with a guitar and play any song just by myself. I want the songs to be able to stand up in that kind of way. Uh, yeah, so I'd say probably First Prize Bravery is like the maybe the best example of what I had in my head 
before I started. <laughs> did, did it function as uh, somewhat of a blueprint in a way then for, for the kind of the rest of the songs? Was it early, one Actually, that was Actually, no, because that's one of the last ones okay. that I wrote. Uh, that might be the last, th yeah, that is one of the last songs that I wrote. But maybe just over time I had gotten better <laughs> at mm. like articulating my okay. ideas. Um, Honey, Honey kind of for me was like the blueprint because mm. that one, once I wrote Honey, then I had a greater idea of what the album should be and how, and I've had more confidence that I was going to be able to, to make it. Mm. Um, so I kept going, when I would get a bit confused and lost, I would go back to Honey and I, that would sort of remind me of like what I wanted it to be. Right. But then uh, first time, uh, first prize bravery, uh, that line you took. Uh, yeah, for the album title. So, so what was it about that line that, that stuck out to you? I think that song is maybe the most, um, the like idea of that song probably is the best representation of what the whole album is about. Um, kind of just like, I don't know, wishing that you could have a bit more courage in certain situations in your life and then admiring the people who do and kind of this feeling of like, Whatever is the thing that is your, like the thing you have to deal with or the thing that you have to overcome, like realizing that you have to overcome that over and over and over and over again in your life. That's like cons gonna be consistently your battle sure. <laughs> or, or something like that. But, but with, with what you mentioned and um, kind of, uh, I wrote a line, a line down from Don't Talk About It, but um, I just thought you and I uh, would dream a little bigger. So do yeah. you have kind of a, a <laughs> so, so, Do I have a big dream? Yeah, some idyllic uh, vision in front of you? Honestly, no. I, I don't really... I don't, I'm not the type of person who like thinks about the future a huge amount. I don't like make great big plans. I kind of just like see, <laughs> see where I go. Um, but I do think sometimes like, you know, when you start out or when you meet someone or you can hold on to an idea of like what you think it is or what it's supposed to be and then sometimes it's hard to accept that it doesn't live up to that. Right. I think that's what that line is kind of about. Because, well, the way it sounds to me, and this might be wrong because I'm <laughs> not a musician, <laughs> um, but that could also be true about the music industry. Yeah. So, so and especially, well, you've been to New York and you've seen that kind of rendition. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, how, how do you feel about kind of where to go, this, this is the album, and, um, but where, where, how do you look at kind of the... the My career. Yeah, that is, it sounds so official all of a sudden. No. Um, but because you are, I, I would say, you are ambitious, right? Yeah, I am ambitious. But uh, I think my ambitions have probably changed a lot over the last couple of years. Like when I was younger, I think I was more ambitious for like stuff that was like very like obviously like signs of success you know mm -hmm. like playing certain festivals and like but then the more I started to do it that that stuff matters to me less now and it, I think I'm more ambitious about like just like writing better songs or like mm -hmm. maybe certain people who I would who you know working with certain people or like um, I'm more I think I'm now I'm more ambitious about the actual music and like mm -hmm. rather than the career side of it obviously that's important because it lets you it, it allows you to keep doing it uh, it allows you to continue to be a professional musician if it's going well but like yeah i'm in, ambitious in a different way now i think final question then what mm -hmm. would you for, for for people who haven't heard of your music or don't kind of yeah. don't know about you what do you want them to take away from from one of your songs or? um what do i want them to take away I don't know. I think what I like about the music that like resonates with me is just I think sometimes you hear a song and it makes you feel a little less alone about whatever you're going through. So just that. Okay, well, <laughs> one, one very quick question. Yeah. Then. Who is at the, at the moment an artist that does that for you? An artist that does, has that, that does that for you. me? Yeah, um, when you hear songs of or Maybe someone like Julia Jacqueline okay. or Sharon Van Etten. Like sometimes I hear those songs and I'm like, wow, that's that's my brain. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's like, how did they write that? That's how I feel. So, yeah. yeah. All right. Thank you very much for your time. No problem. Thank you Thank very you. much.